So it's been a little while since I made a project and that's okay. Um, I've got a couple of weeks downtime at work, so well, I don't have the time off work, but there's less work coming in, so it's less hectic. Um, anyway, I thought I'd look at this, which is the HT16 K33. Well, this isn't. This is the IC on the back. And on the front, we've got four 14 segment LED displays. Now this sort of project, if you can call it that yet, um, is sort of inspired by the unexpected maker and his Whopper display. So I really liked it. And I made a suggestion that he could make it into an online game of sorts. So essentially you're trying to break the code, just break the code to the missiles, just like the Whopper was. Um, and so I started using an ESP32, hooked it up to one of these little Max 7219 displays. Uh, so I've just been doing this in sort of during lockdown. Um, and this works quite well. Um, I've got it inf interfaced with my website. So there's a form on the website you fill in and then it, it updates the display. Currently it's just random. Um, but once you get one of the characters right, it locks in. So this isn't really what I wanted because these are only seven segment digits. So it can only be numbers. Um, and I wanted it to be sort of full characters. So in comes the HT16K33. And I thought we'd try driving these from an ESP32. And we'll get that far probably. And then we'll look at the internet connected bit later. So the, the idea was that people would be able to tweet at me their guess for the code. Um, like so replace some of them with dashes if you don't know what the character is and then it will come up with one of the characters on the thing. And it would be a word so it would be fairly easy to get through. It wouldn't just be a random code. Or I could do it on my website or maybe Twitch, do it in a Twitch chat. I've been like mucking around streaming on Twitch a little bit just to do nothing. A uh, bit of escapism, play some computer games, but the Twitch API is pretty cool. Um, I think Acrobotic did uh, some stuff with the Twitch API, I think. Anyway, this, this is what we're gonna be using. So let's get right to it. You join me over at the computer now where, you know, as always, Adafruit has done most of the heavy lifting. So they sell the uh, the alphanumeric backpack and this is same version I've got, a uh, 14 segment LED, except for this one's blue, um, LED HT16K33 backpack. Now they've got the code for you. One thing they don't explain here is what one of the extra pins is for. So if I just have a look, Sadly, mine aren't from Adafruit. I didn't know they sold them. I just came across one on AliExpress and thought they looked cool. I don't know what this pin here is, the VI2C. I've done some Googling, but that does not bring up anything. Um, so voltage I squared C maybe. So perhaps do you feed in 3.3 volts to make it three volt compliant? I don't know. Um, I'm just running the things off 3.3 um, volts because it'd be coming from an ESP32. So I'm not overly worried, but um, so I might just leave it disconnected. We'll experiment when we get back to the bench with it. I'm going to have to solder some headers on actually. I haven't got any on there, but it was the code bit I was interested in here. So they do have some code available. So it uses one of their libraries. Now, that you can actually use these with Python. So um, I could be using Python. I'm probably not going to use Python in this case. Anyway, um, let's have a look. Arduino wiring and setup. So it's, this is the, the IC it's interfacing with. It doesn't really matter what board it is, but we can pick up their libraries. So the Adafruit LED backpack library. So I'll install this in the Arduino IDE, but first let's go and solder some headers and wire it up. I'm gonna to have to look up what the I squared C lines are. This is the board that I'm using, or at least one that's very similar to it, uh, Vroom32. Um, and so SCL is just here, three down from, or two down from ground, and then we've got SDA. So those will be the pins that we'll use to communicate with the backpack. Just for testing, I'm just gonna upload uh, this quad alpha num, uh, which is just their default um, example from the Adafruit LED backpack. Now this is gonna sort of cycle through lots of the different characters. In fact, all of the numbers and all of the letters and also symbols as well. So that's good. 
So the ESP32 I've got is pretty rubbish because all of the markings are on the bottom. So when it's in a breadboard, you can't tell which pin is which, uh, which is frustrating. So with that in mind, I wrote down the pins that I needed on this little board and I flip it around. I can tell that first pin over here is 3.3 volts. Ground is the first pin over here. SCL is two down and then SDA is three down from that. So we can breadboard this up. What I'm not gonna do right now is put some headers on this thing. I think we're gonna sort of just lean it up against. So I've cut some, cut some headers, five pins, ready to go. What I do have, um, so use your breadboards like this. You've got, uh, you've only got five in a column, which only leaves you one pin either side, but I have one of these. I've had to write on it, so I remembered what it was. It's the AD100 or AD102. Um, the, the rows have come off this, not rows, what are they called, bus bars have come off this one. I can't remember where I've put them. Um, but as you can see, look, you get two either side on here, which is nice. So we're gonna use this. I'm gonna put it a bit further along because I think I'm gonna put this just over here, just so we can see it. So push that in. And then I cut some off. Where did I put them? Here they are. So we've got uh, just some header pins there. So shove those in. And hopefully that's going to make a good enough connection. I'll just put it like that. We'll see. So this has already been programmed up. So we just need to wire it up. So we've got 3.3 uh, oh, volts is over here. Oh, where is it on here? So it goes... VI2C, don't know what that is yet. VCC, ground, SDA and SCL. Like that, hopefully. So let's just plug it in. I've got a power bank over here. Hopefully it won't switch off. And... No. Okay, let's try the... V I squared C pin and just put that into three volts. Because maybe it needs it. We'll reset a couple of times. Hmm. Oh, I had the wiring wrong all along. Damn it. <laughs> I'd counted wrong. There we go, so that is better. Let me turn it around. Oh, actually, I don't need, yeah, I do need to turn it around. For you, it's upside down. Yeah, that looks all right. Let's solder the headers on, and then we can see this working properly. Reset, there we go. Okay, ace. Right, let's get another one soldered up. Now, the thing about having two of these Ah, there it is. The thing about having two of these is they're gonna sit on the same I squared C bus. And that means we have to set an address. So if I come on here and we just bridge here, let me uh, zoom in and show you. So just there you can see A0, A1 and A2. That will change its I squared C address. The default address is um, 0x70 I think so we're just gonna bridge these ones here hopefully it bridges easy enough yep perfect so that now is 071 I think right I'm gonna get them chained together and we can see a word now I've just soldered a header onto this and also changed the address it strikes me a big good idea if we test that and see whether it doesn't communicate with this one. So let's plug this one back in and we'll also power it up. So this one works fine. Let's try it with this one where I've changed the address. And it shouldn't work, so I'll just unplug it again and plug it back in. No. And that's a good thing. We don't want it to be communicating with this one. So let's go write some code where it writes to both displays and uh, we'll have a little look, see if we can get a word coming up. So looking at the code, I can see that we can daisy chain this thing. We're just gonna have to create a new instance of the Adafruit Alpha Num 4. So 
we've got one here, we can create a new one and we'll call that, I mean, I don't need it to be called that. Let's call it something else. We'll call this alpha two and that one alpha one. And we'll go through and just change these to be one, 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 one. Got one, 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 one. I'll speed this bit up. So now we've changed all of those, we need to add a new one. So we're going to create a new one of alpha one and have that as alpha two, and that will be on 171. All right, I'm going to upload that and see what it does. I think I've missed something here, but I'm not sure what it is yet. So I'll play around, but this is largely, I think, what we need to do. Oh, I totally forgot. This was all about the serial. <laughs> Never mind. let's ignore, ignore scrolling the display. I'm not going to worry about it for now. I'm just going to write something in here. Hopefully it can deal with capitals. Here we go. Just to get rid of spoilers, that didn't work. Let's have a look at changing the I2C address. <laughs> it really should be 071, but let's check. So changing the I2C address. Look on the back, find the two or three, A0, A1, A2 jumpers. So A0 sets the lowest bit of the value to one. A1 sets the middle bit and A2 sets a high bit. So the final address is 070 plus A2 plus A1 plus A0. So for example, if A2 is shorted and A0 is shorted, that's 070 plus 0 plus four plus one. Yeah, so it should be 071 because it's just adding a one, but it's not working. Oh my God, I've just figured it out. I'm like duplicating numbers and replacing them, whereas this should have been zero, one, two, three, you fool. So that's first digit, second digit, third digit, four, fourth digit. God, you absolute noob. Right, we'll upload that again. And then we'll go over to the bench and have a look at it. Flipping heck. Right, you'll have to ignore the extra stuff on this, uh, on these breadboards. Let's see if we can turn it on. There we are. So one thing, I should have noticed this when I was recording earlier, but the displays are different colors, which is a bit weird. So I might have to swap. No, I'm not gonna be able to swap them out. I don't have any of these other displays, so. Oops, disconnected something there, Watts. Let's try resetting that. There we go. Uh, so it says maker casts. <laughs> it's meant to say maker cast, but this is gonna be it. So I've already started writing the code for this, uh, for the guesser section. So it's just gonna be, I think I'm just gonna host it on my own website. Future David interjecting here. So this is gonna be the interface for the guesser, just as a tester on my website. But past David doesn't realize that uh, future David was going to spend, I've spent like three hours writing this and I spent all of five minutes editing that Adafruit code. So I feel a bit bad for the video really, because I could have done a bit more, but whatever, it's just the way it goes. It's what you get into, isn't it? So I've just been super into writing the, the code for this and all the, like, the background stuff. So um, the PHP code that I've been writing for this thing. So yeah, I'm excited. I don't know why I suddenly got really into it, but apologies for past David not really messing about with that code much. I might use something like Integra or Zapier or something like that to read tweets maybe. Or if anyone thinks it's a good idea to do it on Twitch, then I'll give that a go. But these displays are pretty easy to throw together. Ignore everything else on here. That Pretend it's not there. And they do look pretty cool. I do wish they were all one color. <laughs> I shouldn't have bought cheap ones off AliExpress. To be fair though, I would have bought them off um, SparkFun or like Pymeroni or any of those companies had I known they existed before I saw them on, uh, on AliExpress. So it's not doing anything right now, but hopefully it will do in the future. Well, no, it will. I just need to figure out the guessing part. And then we'll do a live stream where you guys can guess lots of different words that I've put in. Yeah, that's cool.
<laughs> so project almost complete. Um, well, almost is relative, isn't it? So yeah, looking forward to this, it'll be fun. Um, hopefully it's something you guys can interact with online. Don't know about the Twitch thing, we'll see. I just like playing games on there really, but yeah, I'm excited. Okay, I'll speak to you all soon, ish. All right, so I've had a bit of downtime from, oh, I forgot to press record. All right, so I've had a bit of downtime from work, so I'm uh, gonna be playing with these. These are HTK6, no, they're not something. This is the HT, it's been a while. Um, this is the HT16K33, well, this isn't, that is the IC on the back. This is a 14-segment 14 14 